Neo went through a rough and turbulent development cycle. Hell, it's a miracle we even have the game today. According to Wikipedia, it was originally based off of an unfinished Akira Kurosawa film, Oni. You know, the super famous Japanese director responsible for Yojimbo and Seven Samurai, which in turn is what Star Wars is based off of. So, not a bad idea. It was scrapped. Or I should say most of this original adaptation was. But development began in 2004, with Neo set to be a JRPG, utilizing the Kurosawa story element of a blonde-haired foreigner. And by 2008, producer Koshi Busawa decided that it was scrapped. With every element of the four years of work scrapped, production of the game was given to Omega Force, and the gameplay made to be akin to that of Dynasty Wars. It... it was scrapped. So in 2010, Team Ninja was brought on to develop the action elements of Neo's gameplay, and by 2012, the game was fully transferred to them. This decision was, in part, thanks to the success of Dark Souls, as Team Ninja had a history of developing challenging, but rewarding games having developed Ninja Gaiden for the Xbox. So, taking heavy influence from Souls, as well as a few other titles, Neo finally came to be in 2017. But after 13 years of development time, is it any good? SCRAPPED! Oh, I guess not. The title is based off of the real historical figure of William Adams. William Adams was an English-born man who studied shipbuilding, astronomy, and navigation, and eventually joined the English Navy, serving in the English War against Spain in 1588. Ten years later, in 1598, he was hired by the Dutch Indish Company as a pilot major, where they were originally supposed to sell their cargo in South America and only sail for Japan if this failed. Through a series of misfortunes, every ship that set sail with Williams was lost, except for his own, and they were eventually forced to travel to Japan for fear of the Spanish. Of their crew of 100, only 9 survived their journey to Japan, including William himself, who would later go on to become the first and one of the very few white samurais. Here in Japan, he was dubbed Miura Anjin. There was a problem though, which was that his personal guardian spirit, Sersha, had been stolen by none other than the alchemist Edward Kelly. Kelly, that bastard, had traveled to Japan with Sersha in order to steal the Japanese spiritual powers and start a Japanese civil war! So William, gaining new guardian spirits and using mystical powers would have to fight off against giant yokai, or supernatural demons, in order to reach Kelly. But Kelly kept on summoning bigger and bigger yokai! And then, like, they would get all entangled in this Japanese civil war as various factions fought to become the next shogun, but William, being the badass boy samurai, got more and more powerful! And he ended up dueling all the famous Japanese samurai just to prove how strong he was! But that was just a side mission for him, as he had to use his badass skills to fight Edward Kelly and save all of Japan from yokai tormenting them. What? This all happened? It's historical fact. For the game, William Adams is in prison in the Tower of London for knowing too many political secrets after fighting with Spain for England. Although something about this scene seems familiar. I feel like, I feel like I've seen this start to a game before, but I can't remember where. I don't know. Maybe it's just deja vu. Also, why does William look just like Geralt of Rivia from the Witcher series? Geralt, er, er, William, breaks out of prison only to find Edward Kelly, who steals Sersha, William's personal guardian spirit who helps him overcome death, who wants to utilize Sersha to dry out and steal Amrita. Amrita being a spiritual energy that gives you power and what you utilize in the game to level up. Apparently, Japan is the land with the most of this Amrita, so Edward Kelly sets sail to Japan with William following in an attempt to reclaim his guardian spirit. During the journey, William finds a memoir that somehow allows him to learn the way of the samurai and their techniques. That's it. Now I too am a master of acrobatics. <laughs> William lands in Kuroshima, a tiny island off the coast of Usuki in Kyushu's Bungo province. The village is plagued by bandits, and even worse, multiple yokai. This is where the game and your adventure truly starts. As Neo was inspired by Dark Souls, the combat is slower and more methodical than other Team Ninja titles. Reading your enemies and having an understanding of their various attacks are of the utmost importance, with each enemy having the ability to murder you if you're not careful. Dying also works in the same manner as Dark Souls, as you'll lose all of the amaranth you've collected if you die, which acts as the currency for leveling up, and have a chance to recollect this unless you die again. Neo was also inspired by Diablo, as you'll get so... So much loot! 
I don't think you understand. Enemies practically explode in treasure. You have a limit of carrying 500 items at once, and you'll constantly need to get rid of items in one fashion or another, as one mission alone can net you over 100 pieces of equipment. What I'm trying to say is, this is a more accurate portrayal of William than his in-game model. Get at them, William! Get at them! One of the largest twists to the Neo formula is in the various weapon stances you can take up. You can take a high, mid, or low stance, as well as sheath your weapon, with every one of these offering unique combos and attacks, as well as pros and cons with how quick versus powerful they are. In other words, you have to memorize combos, stance changes, perform constant timing-based key pulses, learn which weapons are best for various situations, which I got lazy about, memorize special attacks, and have the dexterity to constantly switch between all of these on the fly. Learning curve? Pfft, what learning curve? Kuroshima's main problems are the result of a giant onryoki, which brings you to your first boss and another main element of Neo. Neo's levels are structured as various missions you'll traverse, with each containing a number of hidden kodama, which will give various benefits for finding them, a large and intricately winding level, as well as a major boss you'll need to fight at the end. For defeating the first of these, William will come across a Tori Hanzo. And don't worry, I know exactly what you're thinking. THE Hattori Hanzo from Japanese history who is both a samurai and ninja? Who is known as Oni no Hanzo, or roughly translated Demon Hanzo? The very same? <laughs> no, you idiot! The game clearly takes place in 1600, as indicated at the start of your mission, and Hattori Hanzo died in 1596. This is obviously the legendary Hattori Hanzo's son. Hattori Hanzo. So obvious. Hattori Hanzo is somehow fluent in English. Your skill against Oni is implicit. This is your skill with English. It's a ninja thing. Hattori Hanzo offers to help you with your quest to chase down Kelly, if you'll help him fight off the various yokai and Oni appearing throughout Japan. You agree to this, and the two of you head out as Hattori Hanzo checks the time, and, 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 what? He's literally using his cat like a pocket watch to tell the time. This is a real thing. Apparently, cat's eyes are more sensitive to the light than humans, and therefore dilate and change shape throughout the course of the day far more than humans, depending on how bright it is outside. While I can't say how true it is that Ninja would actually use this in history, it is one of the legends about Ninja. Leaving Kuroshima, you'll find yourself in the Kyushu region of Japan and in the middle of a power struggle between two Japanese lords. The Japanese overlord Toyotomi Hideyoshi had recently died, and power was supposed to go to his then five-year-old son Toyotomi Hideyori. One of his five regents, Tokugawa Ieyasu, was all like, No, that's not cool, I want to rule, and decided to fight for control. Meanwhile, a powerful daimyo, Ishida Mitsunari, opposed him, creating two major warring factions for who would be the true leader of Japan. Hattori Hanzo is apparently on Tokugawa Ieyasu's side, and you'll be tasked with clearing out yokai from Kyushu before you can proceed to the next region. This leads you into the mountains of Nakatsu, where you'll meet a new guardian spirit, Nekomata, the Pirate Cat! He's there to teach you the ways of the pirate! Huh? Oh, no. Somehow he makes this so you can understand Japanese. Just like a pirate! Arr, matey! Dodeska! So, as you understand Japanese now, you traverse deeper into Nakatsu only to be greeted by a slew of new yokai, such as a wall mimic, which is actually pretty sick and will open the way for you if you perform the right gesture. Or, I mean, you can just kill it. Whoever said violence doesn't solve anything was wrong. You'll also meet a Cyclops Yokai and your first Kappa. Did you know? Kappa are known to gain powers by taking people's shiri kodama. In other words, pulling your soul out of your butthole. They... they do that. Kappa, everybody! Oh yeah, and you'll also come across a seductress vampire-esque lady called Hino Enma. But last I checked, they don't steal things out of your butt. Defeating her will get William invited to a sweet party where, uh... You, you sure you understand Japanese there, buddy? No? Yes? So, apparently even though he understands Japanese, he can still only speak English and communicate in English. Right. He also runs into Okatsu, a ninja girl who refers to him as a golden-haired samurai. Uh, am I... am I missing something here? 
I get that the concept art shows William with blonde hair, but in-game, that- THAT SHIT IS GRAY! Although, then again, they do call cocaine the white gold. Okatsu, have you been- So, alright, this aside, you end up at Tachibana Castle, where you'll find Fuku, a girl who teaches you Onryo magic and quite possibly the most important thing in the game. Look, I don't want to call it OP, but it's fucking OP. One of the abilities you can learn with Omyo Magic is how to use the Sloth Talisman. This ability allowing you to temporarily slow enemies to a crawl while you absolutely wail on them. And it's great. And I love it. And I'm going to marry it. Or this guy. Look at him. He's so cute. At the end of the level, you'll once again run into Kelly, who's using Sersha to gather him rid of from the various regions of Japan, and... T teleports away. Which is some shit! So fine. Back to chasing Kelly. This time you travel to Osaka and- NEVER MIND! GIANT WATER BLOB MONSTER! So instead, you make port in the Chugoku region, where... Honestly, not much really happens. But while you're busy farting around doing nothing, Kelly has made arrangements to work with none other than Ishida Mitsunari. If you don't remember, that's Lord Ieyasu, who you're helping out via Hattori Hanzo's rival. So eventually you face off against the Umibozu to allow yourself safe sea travel and make your way into the Kinky region, where the name of the region ends up proving true. Oh yeah. It's also worth mentioning this spider yokai, Joro Gumo, came from the broken remnants of a tea kettle, and the whole area is based off of the true story of Matsunage Hisahide, who was besieged by Oda Nobunaga in 1577. Oda Nobunaga being a famous Japanese daimyo with ambition to conquer all of Japan. Hisahide was such a lover of his tea that before committing suicide, he first made sure to destroy his tea bowl so no one else could have it. Taking Petty to a whole new level. The Kinky region is also home to Oda Nobunaga's wife, who Kelly has brought back to life with his magic as a terrifying yokai, and what I ended up finding to be the easiest boss fight in the game, between AoE attacks every time you get close, quick running stab attacks when you're far away, and her going absolutely insane when she summons her butterfly guardian spirit, she was, uh, a walk in the park. Yep. Okay, fine. Maybe she took me nearly an hour to beat. So what? I talked to my buddy Caddy about it online, who informed me it took him three goes and around 15 minutes, and... Well, maybe you just suck. In her defeat, you meet Tenkai, another Onmyo mage who leads you northeast of Kyoto to Mount Hiei, and to where Kelly is pulling in even more Emrita. He unleashes evil spirits to which Nekomata, your pirate cat, jumps in, sacrificing himself to save the day. Meaning that I'm going to go back to pretending William has no idea what anyone's saying to him, as Nekomata was the one who gave him the ability to understand Japanese. What? Sorry, what? I I don't I don't understand. I don't understand. With Kyoto and the Kinky region safe, it's onwards to the Tokai region and some of my favorite missions in the game. The first being a ninja mansion filled with traps and hidden passages, which was an absolute blast to explore. You also discover Hattori Hanzo's father, the famous Hattori Hanzo, is apparently a giant toad. Isn't it amazing when the son looks identical to the father? Another mission being Memories of Death Lilies, which will find you traversing through a mountainside with a large waterfall and stream, where it turns out a grieving mother has become a furious yokai and is causing all of the area's problems. It's here that you discover the ninja girl from earlier, Okatsu, is the daughter of Tokugawa Ieyasu, and ran away from a fixed marriage to become a ninja. Finally, you'll also scale Edo Castle, which is modern-day Tokyo. And just like Tokyo, you'll be forced to traverse through a giant sewer of shit. I've never been to Tokyo, it was a joke, please don't hate me. I'm serious here, you'll find multiple dung balls, and everyone comments about how horrible it all smells. You'll also find a noble dung ball. Ah yes, I don't know if you realize this, but poo from an aristocrat is actually more valuable than your everyday poop. Just ask this guy! <laughs> Who will apparently give you something special if you give him enough poop. Is there someone like that in real life? 
because I'm the gift that keeps on giving. Finally, by reaching the top of Edo Castle, you'll find a possessed Okatsu. This game goes in tiers. First you were forced to put down your possessed cat, and now you're forced to put down the possessed cute ninja girl. And after defeating her and basically trying to kill her, you go in for a kiss. Wait, wait, wait! Wh what? You literally just try to kill her, and your first instinct is to try and kiss her. I'm pretty sure that's the definition of domestic abuse. Kelly then appears, threatening Okatsu's life, and Lord Ieyasu, her father, shows up, and doesn't give a shit. Come on. What? Now that's a man! Good thing we're fighting on his side. Kelly once again disappears, where it turns out he's helped Ieyasu's rival, Ishida Mitsunari, raise an army of both men and yokai. So it's on to the Sekigahara region, where you take part in the historic Battle of Sekigahara. This battle being the final showdown between Tokugawa Ieyasu and Ishida Mitsunari. Fortunately, as, you know, history stated, Tokugawa Ieyasu has you on his side. So you battle Mitsunari's yokai and guardian spirit infused samurai to cut your way down to victory. That is, until Kelly compels Mitsunari into sacrificing 300 of his men to create a giant skeleton yokai, Gasha Dokuro. What, you don't remember reading about that in a history class? <sighs> Someone was falling asleep in a history class. Gasha Dokuro is actually a fairly easy boss when you discover the strategy for its defeat, which consists of breaking one of his limbs and then attacking his head. And with Gasha Dokuro's defeat, it's time to finally finish your chase of Kelly and Ishida Mitsunari once and for all. Once again on the chase, you travel through the Omi region where you fight against the Obsidian Samurai, a black samurai who was another historical figure. Known as Yasuke, he became a samurai under Oda Nobunaga and served him up until Nobunaga performed seppuku in 1582. His goal in the game is to help Kelly resurrect the legendary warlord Oda Nobunaga, which Kelly is successful in doing and you're forced to- Nobunaga Oda! <laughs> okay, is it just me, or does this seem incredibly cartoonish? Nobunaga Oda. And, in the same vein, once you're close to defeating Oda Nobunaga, he'll defeat you anyways, and decide, eh, he was fine with being dead, and doesn't want to be controlled by Kelly. So that, that's it. Kelly's scheme comically over. You then finally face off against Kelly, who's surprisingly easy, mainly because he's more of a schemer and summoner than a fighter, and he uses the last of his powers to summon Yamada no Orochi, a legendary eight-headed dragon. This brings you to the roof of the Zuchi Castle, where you face off in an epic duel and eventually bring both Yamada no Orochi and Kelly to their end. And after how frequently Kelly disappeared and teleported away, that is satisfaction. So, with your tail wrapped up, Tokugawa Ieyasu decides to erase the yokai and guardian spears from history and decides they should never be mentioned again to prevent anyone abusing their powers. In other words, Neo is actually real history, and all of this is the undocumented cover-up that Tokugawa Ieyasu tried to hide. That is why the game was in development hell for 13 years. It was actually Koshibusawa trying to tell a forbidden tale to the world. Neo ended up being a fantastic game inspired by Souls elements. It still maintains plenty of feel from the Ninja Gaiden games and Team Ninja's roots, but proudly wears its Souls inspiration. And for me, I felt it was different enough to feel like its own unique experience, and the deviations from Souls games were what I enjoyed about it. And there's more to the game, including difficult side missions, the revelation of who's really pulling Kelly's strings, new game plus mode, and more- Dave, what are you doing? A show about Neo? Dave! Dave, you, you just, you can't just tell the story of Neo, it's forbidden knowledge! You know what that means? I have to... commit Sudoku? Sudoku. Sudoku. <laughs>